Joel Kirschman, and he is going to be speaking about simulations and evaluation of communication systems and comfortable with third, fourth generation wireless standards. Great, does everybody hear me? Again, my name's Joel Kirschman. I work for AWR Corporation. I've been with AWR for about 10 and a half years, and today we're going to talk about, in so many words, the uh, connected solution that AWR has to offer. So we'll have a brief overview of the connected solution. What is it? What does it mean? What are they? We'll uh, talk about our optional product called TestWave. TestWave is the link of the AWR design environment to instrumentation. <clears throat> we'll talk about two particular problems or applications of where you can use this connected solution. And when we talk about this connected solution, for obvious reasons, we are going to be talking about Roden Schwartz equipment. Although TestWave does connect to various vendors. So the AWR design environment can communicate to other instrumentation, but the um, here we'll concentrate on the relationship with Roden Schwartz, as I said before. And for those of you sitting in the back, we know the obvious reasons. So if we take a picture point of view of what does it mean to have a connected solution, what are they? Everybody shows you this typical flow diagram. What does it mean? You can begin from the production backwards all the way to concept and vice versa. Everything's interaction, interacting. So at any given time in the process of designing this ultimate piece of hardware, you can go back to concept, back to prototyping, back to design verification, and all the way up to, to uh, production. Verbiage, what, what are they? It's a, it's a tool for RF engineers, baseband, digital engineers. It's a change of the traditional way of thinking. And uh, a test bench is not just for a system designer. It's for the circuit designer as well. Another picture. The AWR design environment consists of microwave office and visual system simulator. Uh, we can connect microwave office to instrumentation, such as a network analyzer. The RF microwave designer would use that to extract large signal or small signal S parameters and drop it into the circuit simulation tool. We could connect instrumentation to realize the impact of an MMIC or a PC board and bring that into the environment. In terms of uh, working with visual system simulator, the system simulator of AWR, you can use this as your single generator, pass it on to an ARB and the signal from the ARB into a device under test. So test wave, this is the means of which we connect the AWR design environment to instrumentation. It provides a physical link between test and measurement equipment in the AWR simulation environment. We can connect to the equipment via GPIB, LAN, or Visa connection, and uh, different case models are supported. One particular application is component design and optimization. And you can use a vector network analyzer to um, characterize the component. Measured data can be imported into the simulation environment. In effect, you can use commercial off-the-shelf components, use a vector network analyzer and or signal analyzer, and bring those commercial off-the-shelf components into the environment, string them together, then look at the impact and how they interplay between each other. Application number two, this is where you can use VSS to generate a signal, whether it be a commercial cellular standard, LTE, WCMA, Edge GSM, or WiMAX or Wi-Fi. You'll take the signal from the simulation environment via GPIB, LAN, or Visa connection, pass it into a vector signal generator, and then from the vector signal generator to device under the test, into a single analyzer, and back into the uh, system tool. A case in point, one can design your digital pre-distortion system in VSS, create the signal in VSS, pass it to the device under test, and bring it back into an FSQ, for example, take the signal off the FSQ, and bring it back into the simulation environment of VSS 
You can look at the signal before amplification in blue, the signal in amplification in black, and the signal with digital pre-distortion and ultimately use the simulation environment to make an ACPR or ACLR type of measurement. This is a single carrier example, but you can definitely do multi-carrier examples as well and monitor the impact of your software rendition of a digital pre-distortion system. We also have pre-configured test benches that work with Roden Schwartz equipment, specifically an SMU 200 and an FSQ. Here we're looking at a WiMAX signal generator at the far right in VSS. It's fully configurable to physical layer one specifications. You'll configure that model to generate the WiMAX signal of interest. You'll pass to the second block on the right, and that's the test wave block. That block in the VSS environment provides the communication link to instrumentation. From a user's point of view, you tell us the equipment that you're connecting, you give us the LAN or the visa connection or the GPIB address of that equipment, and then press on. Moving on, we do have uh, the same capabilities as you would find in instrumentation for um, demodulation of the signal, an estimation of the pilot or the subcarriers, and we make a correction on gain and phase prior to the EVM measurement being made with the vector signal analyzer. And we do have a component for time and frequency alignment in the tool. The upshot is we can provide test benches as such where you can look at the IQ plot off the instrumentation, off VSS, instantaneous power, spectrum of the WiMAX signal, and uh, the EVM measurement made in VSS versus that in equipment. And here we see a very close alignment in the 1% EVM measurement coming off the equipment and the 1% EVM measurement being made in VSS. Okay, so now at this point, you can pass your amplifier into the design at one point in here, and then continue on and look at the impact of the amplifier or a filter or, or any RF component on that EVM measurement. We also have a link to Roden Schwartz Win IQ SIM 2. This will be another means of generating signals in VSS. So, in addition to having models for LTE and WCMA at the sub circuit level in VSS, we have this interface at Win IQ SIM 2 that gives you a GUI interface to generate the commercial standard signals of your choice, inclusive of 802.11n and TDNN. So, there are some signals that we don't generate in the VSS environment. So we would suggest if you wanted to continue working with the VSS environment and have signal generation capability to consider WinIQ SIM 2 as an option. And you'll have this GUI interface that's rather interactive and self-explanatory in generating the signals. The signal that's generated in WinIQ SIM 2 is encrypted. It's kept in the VSS environment. It can't go to any other tool simulation environment. The only place that it can go is back into Roden Schwartz equipment. So when you look at the VSS environment, you'll see we have models or blocks that are dedicated to this capability. They're labeled as Roden Schwartz. They act as a source or a sync. And uh, if you're using the sync model, then you're writing the WV file to the hard drive. And again, that, that signal is encrypted. So here's an example of uh, two LTE signals generated through the GUI of WinIQ SIM 2, passing through a behavioral amplifier in, in VSS. And we do have the capability of tuning on key and parameters such as P1dB, IP3, as well as IP2. And you can look at the impact of that behavioral amplifier. What ramifications or what impairments does it add to that LTE signal? So this is working at the behavioral level. As your design progresses, you can replace this component with an actual circuit design for microwave office and run the same signal once again through that. Uh, and recently, we've uh, not only do we work with WinIQ SIM 2, but we'll work with the Roden Schwartz a software analyzer program called K96. This is um, 
an environment, yeah, the screen capture isn't that great, but here you'll use this K96 software to demodulate any of this common OFDM signals. So you can generate the signal in VSS, WinIQ SIM2, pass it through the RF impairment, the link, whatever it may be, into K96 for further analysis of EVM and spectral analysis. And that's shown in picture wise. So here in the VSS environment with WinIQ SIM2 and K96 running on the same PC, you have the same signal that's on the SMU, the same analyzer software that's running on instrumentation also running on your PC. And you can have a virtual environment for your RF hardware. So there's no question about the signal generation and there's no question about the demodulation process. It's the same, one and the same. And it's the same license that allows you to run WinIQ SIM2 in VSS to run the K96. An example, case in point, WinIQ SIM2 interface, upper right, source, device under test, out into a sync, into instrumentation, device under test, LAN, and the K96 interface that's running on your PC. The K96 is not embedded in VSS. You're taking the WV file and reading it into the K96 software for demodulation. So we've built test benches where we actually use Roden Schwartz as the source. Our lookup table, sub-circuit, amplifier under test, go back into the Roden Schwartz software called K96, and we can make such measurements as EVM with or without digital pre-distortion, for example. And for further information, obviously you can look at these key websites. The Roden Schwartz websites are designated as such. The AWR websites are up above. When we do have application notes on interfacing with them, um, the Roden Schwartz equipment. We have one specifically using a generic QPSK signal and the whole test bench is set up to run with an SMU and an FSQ in our environment. I guess I'm open for questions and answers. That's it.